and the something else is Now in a conventional power station, what we have is a furnace and inside this we just burn something. So it could be coal, oil, gas, or maybe a biofuel. And what happens is that this then heats up water, which is in pipes, and this hot water, when it's turned to steam, goes along through this part here into a steam turbine, which starts turning. And that turbine at the end causes a generator to turn, which generates electricity. Now in a nuclear power station, we just replace this furnace and we replace it with a nuclear reactor. And all this is trying to do is get water to be hot so it can turn to steam. And effectively this building stays the same. All we need is steam which turns the steam turbine which then causes generator to then generate electricity. So what are the key features inside the reactor? So this is the reactor core. Inside the core you have rods uh, which have some fuel in it. Often this is uranium or plutonium. And what happens in a normal nuclear reactor is something called nuclear fission. And that's when big atoms split apart, and as they split apart, they release a huge amount of energy. Now, there are other things inside to control a rate of reaction, but effectively, this whole thing here is filled up with water. If you've got something which is splitting up, giving out lots of energy, that means eventually that water is going to heat up. And what happens here is that we've got something called a heat exchanger. In a heat exchanger, we basically have uh, some of the hot water from the reactor heating up water in these other pipes, which then goes off to turn the turbine. So effectively, we've got loads and loads of pipes. You've got two separate systems where the water from the reactor heats up the water in these other pipes. And again, once you've got that hot water that's turned to steam, it then just causes these turbines to turn around, which then causes a generator to generate electricity. So the advantage of this is that you don't need much fuel. And also, once it's up and running, it can just keep going and keep going and keep going. Another advantage, I suppose, is that we're not actually having to burn anything. So we're not releasing carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. One of the downsides, I suppose, is that if this goes wrong, it goes badly wrong and it affects lots of people. So think about there's uh, things like Chernobyl and Fukushima. What happened here was that there was a meltdown in the reactor. It got too hot. And then once it got too hot, suddenly it became unsafe. And then some in, you know, there's various explosions and that released a lot of radioactive material. Because the other problem with this is that once these big uranium uh, nuclei split apart, the things that they then make are radioactive. And they're radioactive for maybe hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. And that's another big problem is that once we've got all this nuclear waste, so any fuel that isn't used in any kind of daughter products from this fuel that's split apart, we don't know what to do with it. And at the moment, we're just kind of storing it, wondering where we can put it in the future. So a couple of big disadvantages to nuclear power is that if it explodes and goes wrong, it goes badly wrong. And also, we don't know what we're going to do with all of this uh, waste. But in terms of their operation, it's basically the nuclear reaction heats up water. That water can then turn turbines, which causes generators to generate electricity.